Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Text. Today we're going to be looking at this from Art Ticket. It's the Freezer 13X, or in this case, it's the i13X because this is the Intel version. They also do an AMD version, which is the A13X. And then both of those versions also have a CO version, which basically means the fan, instead of being white, is black. The retail prices of these are roughly around 22, 23 euros. <laughs> Okay, let's have a look at the box and go over a few of the specifications. So, obviously, it's made by Arctic. It's the Freezer i13X. They do a CO version as well, which has sort of got black uh, fan on there instead of a white one. And they also do an A13X and an A13X CO, which is basically the same again, but a for AMD instead. By the looks of it, there's three heat pipes on the actual uh, heat sink itself and you've got that moulded fan on there, so I'm guessing the fan cannot be changed, but it does come with a six year warranty, so if anything did go wrong with the fan, unless you break it yourself, obviously, then you have got a six year limited warranty. So let's have a quick look at the rest of the box. This side you've got all your different languages. On the back it shows you about the pressure optimised fan, direct touch heat pipes, so the heat pipes are touching directly onto the CPU, so that hopefully transfer the heat around a lot better. It's got a small footstep for optimised compatibility and fluid dynamic bearing. It's saying that i13X, obviously I'm guessing this is under overclocked to 4.4 GHz, as it says there. Um, I'm guessing it's under full load. Uh, it runs at 81 degrees C compared to the state straightforward 13, which runs at 84, compared to an Intel stock cooler, which is 98. So that gives you a bit of a idea what sort of performance is. We're also going to check against the smaller brother of this which is the which is the Freezer 7X which in all honesty looks pretty much identical. The only difference I can see just from looks is it's only got two heat pipes instead of three but there may be one or two other little differences. I'll have a look side by side in a few seconds. Other things to note it's got MX2 pre-applied thermal paste the fan size is 92 millimeters. Fan speed is 300 to 2000 RPM. We've already mentioned it's got a fluid dynamic bearing and its noise level is 0.3 stone. And the connector on there is a four pin. So that obviously means it's going to be adjustable and so forth. The with the length at 86 millimeters, the width at 109 millimeters, the height at 137 millimeters, and a weight of 443. Don't mention 443 watt, but I'm presuming that is grams. Okay, so this is what you've got in the box. You've got a QR code, so this basically scan this with your smart device, uh, and that will allow you to see the instructions how to install this. They do not put instructions in the box to save paperwork because they're environmental friendly. One thing I always say about this, if they're environmental friendly, which um, no doubt they are, but to save even more information, why don't they have this printed on the inside of the lid of the box or the outside of the box, maybe? And why don't they have this thank you for choosing Arctic and this combined into one item so wouldn't that not save a little bit more paperwork but again still it's better than having a big instruction manual which generally you're not going to see most of it but you are obviously going to have to have a look on your phone which uses power and energy and electricity and so forth to use it but anyway down to the actual items itself so you've got those uh, you've got looks like some little paper rings there that's going to be your backing plate that'll fit on the back side of your motherboard. So if you're fitting this to a CPU and motherboard, which is already inside a case, make sure the motherboard, you can access it from the back. It's got a cut out in the back. Otherwise, you're going to have to remove the motherboard to fit this. But this will go on the back of the motherboard, basically. So the motherboard goes on top. I'm guessing these screw in to these four holes like that. So one there, one there, one there. The cooler goes over the top held down by these, which are then screwed on with these. So it's pretty simple, but you do have to be able to access the back of your motherboard. We've either been removing the motherboard itself, um, or having a cutout in the back of your case uh, to access it. 
Let's take a closer look at the cooler itself. Uh, start at the bottom. On the bottom you can see it's got a plastic covering up the pre-applied thermal paste. The heat sinks, or at least from what it says, we'll just draw a line, yeah, go all the way through the bottom. So they touch the bottom of these, or they touch the top of the CPU, the heat pipes do directly, which then draws the heat up through here. Uh, then it gets radiated through all the fins and then obviously the air pushes it out with its pressure optimized fan so it's pretty straightforward and there's three heat pipes it's not six it's just three because they join together okay and this is obviously fittings for an Intel CPU the AMD one will look a little bit different on the bottom but in basics it's pretty much the same just slightly different fittings because the motherboards are slightly different to the way they fit coolers, which is a shame. It would be nice if they were all the same, so everything would fit nice and easy, but not the case. As you can see there, you've got your fan. It's got five blades. They are curved. This is one of their pressure-optimised fans. We have reviewed pressure-optimised fans from Arctic in the past. They're pretty good. Um, 92 millimetres, so it's sort of that between the 80 and 120 size, but it keeps it nice and compact. So in all honesty, if you want to replace that, you've got to replace that whole fitting. And if you're doing that, you might as well buy a complete brand new unit, unless you're able to get them to replace it under warranty. Um, so that's obviously up to you there, because it does come with a six-year warranty. So that should be pretty good. Otherwise, there's not a huge amount to see. You can see all the fins on there. You can probably just see through there. The heat pipes you can see just poking up at the top there, underneath the plastic shroud. Uh, you've got your four-pin connection. It's a black cable, so no multicoloured cabling or anything like that. So that's pretty good. I can't see anything really wrong with that. Just to show you in comparison though, what the 7X looks like in comparison to this. That's the 7X. This is the 13X. They look very similar. Obviously the base is going to look different because the 7X does work on multiple different CPUs, so they don't have an Intel and AMD version of this. They basically come with different fittings, so you can fit it to either or. The only real difference I can see, other than the fitting, is the heat pipe on the bottom. There's two heat pipes that will go around this. This has got three. So otherwise, you would struggle to see a difference in the main cooler itself, other than obviously the fitting, as we mentioned. They look very similar. So it'll be interesting to see how much better an extra heat pipe uh, actually cools because that's the only thing I can see different. The fans are rated the same speed The fan is the same dimensions Everything else is pretty much the same the only difference as I said one heat pipe extra and obviously the fitting is Slightly different because this is designed for Intel only where the other one is designed for either or These cost probably three or four maybe five pounds more expensive than the seven the Intel version does cost roughly one euro more than the AMD versions of these. Um, so the Intel one at the moment is going for roughly 24 euros on the Arctic website, um, where you can get the AMD version for 23 euros. Having a little quick look on Amazon, you can get them roughly around that 30 to 32 pound mark. Um, they also have the black version available, which again adds about roughly another two to three pounds or euros on top of the price as well. So roughly you're looking around about 22 up to about 35, depending on the model you go for and where you get it from. Okay, our test setup comprises of an Intel i. 7 9700KF processor, a Gigabyte Aorus Z390 Elite motherboard. We're also running 16 gig of memory, a Seagate Firecuda 520 SSD, as well as a few other bits and bobs, which is pretty generic. Um, but the basics is all tests are run in 15 degrees Celsius rooms. All the tests are run for 30 minutes each. The temperature is the average temperature at those tests so for example if one core was 70 another core was 60 the average would be 65 but again it's the average temperature over 30 minutes and the average temperature of all cores combined 
all the voltages are fixed for the testing so there's no fluctuation and we make sure that the CPU obviously when it is under load is under 100% load and all cores are being stressed. Uh, we don't test the fans on automatic mode because that sort of defeats the object because if you've got a bad cooler it will basically run the fans faster to get roughly the same temperature so we run the tests at 50 percent and on a hundred percent of their speed on all tests the test machine is running the same version of windows with windows updates disabled so there's no differences for any reason with any updates causing problems in the background or differences for whatever reason that goes for the same for the drivers and all background programs are also disabled so that we can basically test it under a controlled environment as much as possible so in this first test we're basically checking to see what sort of temperature the CPU would be running at at 50% fan speed. Again, this is over 30 minutes and it's in degrees Celsius. Again, the machine is running idle at the moment, so it's not doing anything. So as you can see, the 13X and the Freezer 7X both run at pretty much the same temperature, which is roughly four degrees cooler than the Intel stock cooler. So, so far, so good. On this next test, we are running the fan again at 50% speed and we're checking to see how hot the CPU is under full load that means all the cores on the processor are running flat out and as you can see the Intel stock cooler is running at roughly 93 degrees Celsius so it's close to a maxing out and the freezers or both of them are running at 60 degrees and 58 degrees so the freezer 13 is a couple of degrees cooler than the 7x Again, similar test to the first one, where we run the machine on idle, but the fan speed this time is running at 100%, so the fan is running flat out. The Intel stock cooler is running at 26.3 degrees, and both of the Arctic freezers are running at dead on 19 degrees Celsius. So that extra heat pipe the 13X has in it doesn't actually be seeming to do too much of a difference, or at least at idle usage. And again, idle usage means the machine is just sitting there doing nothing. And again, on this next test, we are running the CPU at full load. So it's running at full whack, all cores are running 100%, and the fan is also running 100%. The Intel stock cooler does cool down a little bit better than it was before now, down to 71.4 degrees. The 7X is running at 51 and the Freezer 13X is running at 46 degrees. So it's actually performing a lot better when it gets hotter, or at least the CPU gets hotter, so it's able to cool even better. Here is basically the same test again, but this time we overclocked the processor to 5 GHz, so it's getting a lot hotter. The Intel stock cooler could not cool it enough. The Freezer 7 got it down to 59 degrees, and the Freezer 13X got it down to 57.3 degrees. So that extra heat pipe does reduce the temperatures, in some cases up to 5 degrees lower than the 7X, uh, and in some cases it's pretty much very similar. But it is better, there's no question about it. About that. Here we check the decibel levels of the fans. You can see the 13X comes down to roughly 45.8 decibels uh, and it gets a bit louder at 52.6 when it's on 100% fan speed, which is a lot quieter than the Intel stock cooler running at roughly 58 degrees when it's under full load. So in conclusion, would I actually go out and buy this? And the answer is, is yes, it's ideal for cooling down your Intel processor. Obviously, this is the AMD version as well. Um, but if I was to choose between this and the 7X, um, there's, it's hard to choose, to be honest, because there's only a couple of pounds difference, and that also means there's only a couple of degrees difference in testing. The 7X does have the advantage of one cooler fits all CPU sockets, so it's like a, we've got multiple fittings in the box, where the 13X, which is this one we're testing, um, has an AMD or an Intel model. So that means if you changed your motherboard and processor from AMD to Intel or vice versa, you would have to go out and buy a new CPU cooler. Otherwise, I found the fitting a little bit fiddly. The screws didn't seem to want to screw into the uh, bracket 100% and they kept flopping over and so forth. So it was a little bit fiddly in all honesty. I found the 13X a lot more difficult to fit, but then 
believe it or not, the 7X, which was the multi-compatible one. It's not that I didn't know how to fit it, or it was more difficult to understand the instructions. It was actually quite simple. It's just that it didn't seem to go together 100% as it should. So overall, if you're looking for a decent cooler with basically no added extra, so no RGB lightings, just a good performing cooler at a very value price, then this could be the cooler for you.